Hello, it is Volk. Time to enjoy card making with me. Now I have found a new addiction and that is making flowers using layering stencils. This set from Alina is absolutely stunning. I did not have any experience with layering flower stencils and I must say this is so much fun and really easy to do as well. They come with matching dies as you see, really easy to use. Sorry, this will be a long video because I will be sharing lots of cards with you today and also lots of tips to make easy ink blend flowers and add some sparkle to them. The flower with the large heart in the middle seems to me to be an Echinacea, as I show here in this picture. The flatter flower and the flower without pistils in the middle could also pass for a Turbera, as you can see in the pictures I put on screen. I don't know what's wrong with me, but lately I keep making pink cards, although combined with black and white. With black, the color pink stands out even more. I try to mimic the colors of the Echinacea. I combine the different flowers with each other, but also separately, as you can see in the photos. The flowers are also very pretty in colors other than standard pink and green. I haven't even been able to use these orange ones yet. In this video I explain, among other things, how to easily make several sheets of flowers in a row, how to quickly prepare texts and how to embellish the flowers with glitters and sequins. Let's get started quickly. The stencils have circles at the corners that you can use to align them. Now you don't necessarily need to use those if you use a tool where you can put the stencil in the corner. I use my stamp platform for that. Everything you put in the corner will be in the same place, of course. This stencil is exactly the same width as the die cutting plate on the die cutting machine. At least if you have an A5 cutting machine, which I think is the most common one. This is why you want to cut your paper the same size as the stencil beforehand, so that the paper can go through the die cutting machine. You lay the paper and the first stencil down in the corner, so that later the next stencil will also be in this exact spot. To ink blend, I use these mini brushes from Alina Craft. There are 10 of them in a case, and they are super good for blending. I ink blend the flowers with Memento ink in the color Rosebud, and for all three layers I color with the same color pink ink. Then I color the leaves with Memento Teal Zeal. And for the heart of the flowers I use Memento Tangelo ink and Toffee Crunch. I start by blending the flower in pink. When I have a lot of ink on the brush, I start on the stencil first before smudging the ink on the paper. I also start at the center of the flower, so close to the heart applying the ink. Further towards the center and the tips of the petals comes less ink. I make circular movements, but I'm actually not at all precise in what I do. The layers of ink are applied on top of each other, so you don't see mistakes or imperfections very well. Make sure you color the first layer lightly, otherwise you won't see the layers on top of it very well. But you can already see with this layer that the ink is darkest in the heart of the flower the part where the flower ends in the stem or pistil. Also, for the orange pistils and leaves, I wipe more ink on the edges than in the center of the image. Then I move on to the second stencil, again placing it exactly in the corner, and I go over it with exactly the same colors. Again with darker parts close to the heart of the flower and fading out to light at the tips of the petals. Only on the third stencil I use a brown ink as the second color for the pistils in the flower instead of orange. I thought it would be nicer if there was a difference in this, otherwise the dots would all be in one color. For these little dots, I spin circles in both sides with the brush so that they are colored on all sides. I have already separated the dyes and now I put them on the flower by eyeballing them. It's not difficult to align the dyes. I stick the dies with a piece of tape on the outside of the die, not over the ink as I want to keep the flowers beautiful. Look how pretty all these parts look already. I die cut the last pistol separately as it is a bit too close to the flower above it. 
This piece of paper is important. This is now your template for all the next flowers you will make. So keep it with your stencil. One of the advantages of using the template is that you can now work with scraps of paper. I often have pieces of white paper left over because I cut my own card bases and these scraps come in handy for die cutting a whole bunch of flowers. The stickers are still on them and can last another time. And the dies can be closer together than I did the first time, so that also saves paper. I need more than one of these stamps, so I die cut them more often. So I now have a set of colored flowers and a set of white flowers. On the back of my template I now stick strips of tape. And I do this so that the white shapes stay exactly in place in the template. And now I can ink blend as many dies as I like. And thanks to this template they are always in the right place. On the orange pistols of the flower this time I color the lower part a little pink before going over it with orange. This will give a nice shade and extra depth effect later on. And you can see that I leave the center lighter than the edges. Instead of teal I am now using green. Now there is still some teal ink on my stencil and I'll just leave that on. But I'm going to ink blend over it with this green color. This will mix the green with the teal color, which again gives a very nice new color. So try mixing colors yourself, who knows you might be surprised. I've used this color before with an ink blending brush by Alina and that works fine too. For the third stencil I color the stampers in brown color, but all other parts just in the same color as the underlaying layers. I have to color the stem more often, which goes super fast by putting the stem in the right place in the template over and over again. I took out the flower next to it, so as not to accidentally color it green. That's another advantage of using a template. And another advantage is that you can always put the shape back to apply extra ink over it, which then always ends up exactly in the right place. Here I have the blue version. I'm going to spruce that one up a bit, with glitter paste. Also, a link for this can be found below this video. Stencil number 3, so the stencil with the smallest openings I put on the paper. I have a spatula here. This is actually meant for decorating a cake, but as it has a silicone end, it is very handy for me for working with this glitter paste. I leave this piece of foil on, so that the paste doesn't dry out quickly. You only need a very small amount of paste. The paste spreads easily over the stencil. I don't want the paste too thick, so you can also see the pink color shining through richly. So I wipe it on, but press quite hard on the spatula, so that I also pick up some of the glitter again. And where I have smeared a little too thick, I just wipe it away again. Look how pretty this looks! I clean the stencil and spatula immediately with a baby wipe, or I rinse it under the tap. The glitter paste dries very quickly, you don't want it not to come off your stencil. I dry it with a microfiber cloth. A tea towel will do as well, as long as it dries and doesn't leave any lint behind. I'm going to do the green one too, but for this one I'm using the light brown paste. So again I put stencil number 3 on my template where the figures are already on. I think this glitter paste looks like bronze, really a beautiful color. This really gives such a beautiful effect. You see I only need very little, I spread it on and also partly off. And I am not good at this, I will be honest. With me paste and mixed media products always come out messed up under a stencil. But that is not so bad with this glitter paste. Look, so you can see that with gold or bronze it is also very beautiful. Now I made two different flowers. The one on the left 
with light brown colored glitter, which is this one. And this is the silver one, which is this silver glitter paste. But I can so imagine you don't have that in the house and you still want to give a glitter effect to the flowers. And how do you do that? You can do it with ordinary glitter. Using a glue pen or glue from a small nozzle, you can draw lines on the petals. I draw lines on the edge of a dark blended petal from stencil number 3. It can also be done with the stencil on top if you'd like. I find this easier and quicker and then I don't have to clean the stencil again. When all the lines are on, I sprinkle glitter on top. The rest can just go back into the jar. It now needs to dry for a day. Once it's dry, it still gives off a bit of glitter when you rub it. But with the use of very strong glue, this is actually not much at all. If we compare the glue version with the glitter paste, you can see that the glitter paste is very firm and does not give off any glitter at all. You can also see that the relief is different. This does depend on the amount you put on it. And the glitter paste dries in just 10 minutes, while the glue has to lie around for a day. As you can see, you can go in any direction depending on what you have at home or what you like to do. I also apply some glue and glitter to the pestle. I use a transparent glitter from Alina Craft Store for this. She has a lot of different colors in her store. Transparent glitter always goes with everything. Meanwhile, I am going to make some texts. This stamp set has a matching die set. So if you want, you can use those. Look, this one fits. You can also do it without a stamp. In which case you die cut everything. This text has no die, but I also used it on one of the cards. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how to make a stash quickly and very easily without having to keep measuring to see if you're stamping in the right place. To start, first die cut a shape from a piece of paper. And I deliberately don't place it in the corner because stamping always works better in the middle of the stamping tool. Then you have now created a template for this text stamp. You place the stamp in this empty opening. This is also the easiest way to see if it is in the middle. Then insert the shape. And because I want to heat emboss, I briefly anti-static the paper with an embossing pouch. And then you stamp the text. In this case I do this with transparent ink, especially for embossing. And so now you can stamp a whole set in a row. Alina has several beautiful colors of embossing powder in her wrap shop. I use a nice blue color here. I heat set the powder using my heat tool and now I have made a dark blue, a light blue, a gold and a silver text in no time. Always handy to have a stash. I start by making a slimline card. So that's a piece of A4 paper on its side which I fold at 10.5 cm and the remaining piece I cut off. Then I cut a piece of black paper a centimeter smaller, leaving a half centimeter border on all edges. I stuck this black piece of paper in the middle of the card and now I stick the pink flowers with the blue leaves and silver glitter paste on top. First I slide just until the flowers are in nice composition. Then I first stick the stamps and the petals with glue and then the flowers with foam tape. I use three stems for this composition, so it looks like one long branch. I find four flowers a bit much on this small card, so I decide to leave one out, but it will come in very handy on my envelope. To decorate this card, I use these pink sequins from Alina Craft. They are so pretty. They shimmer and then have such pretty shades of color. Let's just do its work and sprinkle some randomly all over the card. Where they fall, I then stick them on. What's too much, I can remove. Maybe this is a good tip for you too, for when you don't know where you want to stick something. 
The sequins have two sides, a smooth side and a glitter side. The glitter side is the prettier side. I take great care to make sure I have the glitter side pointing upwards. You can see the sequins shimmer. The silver gel paste has a relief and shimmers too. The pestle has two colors of ink with glitter gel paste on top. I have blue with the contrasting pink, which is now reflected in the glitter of the sequins. And a matching silver sentiment to go with it. Nice little card, isn't it? For the next card I use this square nesting die. I use the outer two dies. I put the thin square frame inside the scalloped frame. I die cut these from white paper and then I get this beautiful frame. I die cut this open shape three times and glue them together. If I only use this scallop die and not the square in the middle, the die would look like this. You can go in any direction with this die and also die cut other shapes, smaller, with or without a hole, or just die cut out a square. You could fill all these squares with flowers and text, just to your taste. For all products you will find a link in the description of the video. I hope you will use these links too. For every product purchased I get a small commission. And for those small bits I save up for stuff that makes making and editing videos even better and motivates me to make more videos. So thank you for that. I glue the 3 layer thick frame onto a 13.5 cm square card. Beforehand I glued the pistols and green buds together and I also attached the stems of the flowers I want to stick flat. I first put thick foam tape on the large flowers. Then I put the leaves and flowers on the card. And then I just slide until I like it. I stick the stems on first, then the leaves and the flowers with foam tape on top. Some leaves I stick on one side with glue and on the other with a piece of foam. And so I slide and move until everything is in place. The sentiment is stuck on one side with foam tape and on the other just with glue to attach it nice and flat. I think it's too busy and too much to glue that smallest flower in as well, so I leave it as it is. I could also use this one again for on the envelope, but I might also stick it on a tag and make it into a little tag for a bouquet of flowers. I'm still going to decorate the card with some gold gems. They are acrylic gems. There are four different sizes in the jar. And I stick in a lot of tree again, for a balanced look. You can clearly see with this card how beautifully the gold embossing glitter paste and the gold embossing powder with gold acrylic gems match. Sticking on the components in different heights also give it a bit more relief and a nicer look. I will now show you how I made the matching envelope. And again you can use this technique for on a card. Before making a border I apply talcum powder to prevent the tape from damaging my paper. I use my magnetic craft mat from Craft Emotions to align the tape. This is washi tape from Alina Craft. Nice smooth washi tape. I have already recorded a video about this washi tape, but I haven't edited it yet. Editing videos takes so much time. Just a strip of washi tape like this on an envelope is fun. Finished very quickly too. But I take out the layering stencils again. And blend all three layers of flour on top of each other. Even though I didn't put dots in the corners, or even though I didn't put the envelope in the corner of a tool, these flowers are very easy to lay on top of each other. I do have to look carefully to see which stalk matches the flower, but you can see that pretty well too. Then I go back to the first stencil and color another flower there. I can take the same one I tilled, but I choose this smaller one for this time. I continue right away with the green bottom of the flower, and then come stencil 2 and 3 of course. And so I alternate both flowers and I also keep the position of the flowers alternating. When coloring the green part, I deliberately don't blend over the flower, even though it comes precariously close. 
In that case, I prefer a piece of white rather than blending over it. I also add some stems. And voila, a super cool envelope. To get a glitter effect on the envelope too, I use a gold gel pen. With this I put little subtle lines along the dark blended leaves. I purposely do this a bit wobbly, so it looks more natural and matches the leaves on the card. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable with this, you can also put stencil number 3 on top and then trace over this stencil. Finally, I also have the glitter version lying around. The glue has now dried and you can see some of the glitter comes off, but not that much. Most of the glitter sticks to it. I think it also depends on the quality of glue you use, whether the glitter sticks well. Here I will die cut a frame from black paper by layering these two nesting dies together and die cutting them at the same time. I will later glue the frame raised with homemade black foam strips. For this watch my previous video to see how to make these yourself very easily. I want to stick this center panel exactly in the middle of my card. I'll show you a trick to find the center very easily. On the back of the black panel I first stick double sided tape from Alina Craft. I almost finished this roll of tape. I use it all the time. Fortunately I still have new rolls lying around. A 3mm roll and a 5mm roll. This is what they look like. Back when I wasn't designing for Alina, I already bought these rolls of tape. I am really a fan of them. They stick super well and the roll stays intact until the end. For this card I use a regular 10.5 by 15cm card base. To find the center I am going to lay down the frame first. I already have foam tape on it. But fortunately I can still lay the frame upside down because it is symmetrical. This frame fits perfectly on a European size card. This way I can see exactly where to stick the middle panel. And when I then remove the frame the black panel is exactly in the middle. For such a smaller card I think one big flower is enough. Again I stick the parts both flat and raised. The leaf comes flat on one side of the card and on the other side with a piece of foam tape. This text strip interrupts the black area very nicely. I use my work mat to see if I stick straight. By stamping the text in the middle of a strip you can easily slide and see on which side the text fits best. You then simply cut off the sides. You have to make it easy on yourself of course. I decorated bare pieces again with these pretty sequins. I also just stuck them on the flower and on the leaf. And even on the text strip. Totally fun. I have lots left and everything is covered in glitter. But we love that don't we? Also on this envelope I colored a flower directly with the stencil on the envelope. The flower points the other way, because I reversed the stencils. For blending the stem, I stuck the piece of washi tape on the edge of the stencil, so I don't color over the edge. Again, I color some pink at the bottom of the pestle first, then go over it with some orange. I leave the center of the pestle light on purpose to add more dimension to the image. On my card, the leaves got a mixed ink color, because I had started blending with green ink over a stencil that had not yet been cleaned. So this gave me a mix of blue and green, remember? And if I want to get my envelope to match, I will have to use green first and then blend blue over it. I think it's a very nice color this way though. Also on this envelope I added gel pen stripes and dots to add glitter accents. Just put some lines and dots without thinking too much about it. Doesn't it look great together? Remember that you can do this in any color you like with any embellishment of your taste. For the next card I used the black frame from earlier. I had already taped this with black foam tape strips. 
For these flowers I also glued the stems to the flower first. By sticking foam tape on the joint of the stem and the flower it stays extra firmly together. I glue the top part of the flower again with foam tape and the stem just flat with glue. And this is how I build up the card. I could keep making cards with these flowers, I really like them a lot. This jar of acrylic gems contains all the colors. And I find exactly three that match the ink on my card. I stick them in the shape of a triangle again. I stick a mint green one on the petal, a pink one on the flower and an orange one on the orange ink. That way it's better distributed. I decided to add some extra sequins here too. It makes the cards so much prettier. So this was also made using the version with the glitter applied with glue. For the envelope with this card I ink blended the bottom edge and used only the smallest flower. And you know eh, if you don't decorate envelopes yourself, you can also use this method on the inside of a card or maybe just on a card itself. Or on a label, or maybe on something completely different. If you use permanent ink, you can also stencil such a border on fabric or clothing. Just in case you would like to make a cushion, tablecloth, jeans or blouse with such a floral border on it. I still have some flower ephemera left and I keep bursting with ideas. So I don't want to keep this example from you either. For this card I cut part of the card. With two strips of paper I first mark out which part I want to stick with flowers. When my strip is even with the edge I draw a line. Along these lines I cut out the middle part of the card. So that's the middle of the card including the fold edge. Behind the hole that has been created I stick a piece of acetate foil. Now Alina Crafts acetate foil looks fuzzy but it is because it has plastic protective film on two sides. With a sharp needle you can easily peel off a corner to remove it. The foil is easy to attach with double sided tape. To get the acetate foil exactly in the right place and nice and straight I lay the foil straight down on the inside of the card. By closing the front flaps they stick exactly in the right place. Now I see that I have folded or cut my card crookedly. Fortunately I can cut it straight with the guillotine trimmer. It goes through everything. Such a thing is ideal. Since I bought it I make a lot more cards and my cards are also much prettier. My base card now has a window. On top of this I stick the flower stems. I make sure the flowers only fall into the window, not over it. Anything that sticks out over it I cut off. On the back I stick flower embellishments that I have die cut from thin white paper. If you really want to make a lot of work of it, you can also ink blend them, but mirror it on the back of course and stick them on. But I'll stick them with simple white. To finish it off nicely, I finally stick the two strips I had used to mark the size for the window for strength and to hide the ugly sticky edge of the acetate foil. To stick them in the right place I use the same trick again. I place the strip inside the card, aligning it with the fold edge and the bottom of the paper, then fold the card closed. Similarly for the top, lay it in the right place and then fold closed. I cut off the overhanging parts. With a matching happy birthday text and some silver gems, this card is also complete. For this card I stenciled the left side of the envelope, where I first masked the side with tape to make the edge not too wide. This video turned out to be very long. I hope you appreciate that and will benefit a lot from my ideas and my tips and tricks. I myself enjoyed working with these flower stencils with matching dyes and I also absolutely love all the different glitters and shimmers. Which card do you like best? You can get an even better look at all the cards on my Facebook and Instagram channel where I post photos of them. 
Links to the products can be found in the description below this video. Will you also subscribe to my own channel Sysvolk? Have a nice day and I will see you next time. Bye bye!